Hey artists, today I wanna to talk to you about setting up your portfolio website. So this is a crucial part in being an artist. In my opinion, there is no better way to show off your work online. Um, and I think a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people, whether you're applying for jobs or you're you know, submitting to grants, awards, um, exhibitions, people want to see that you're taking yourself seriously and a portfolio website is a great way to do that. One thing that you might wanna do after you finish this video is download my guide, How to Art. Uh, it is a beginner's guide to establishing yourself as an artist, and a lot of what I talk about right now will be touched on in that guide, plus a whole bunch more. So definitely download that once you finish this video. I will put the link in the description. And now I wanna share everything I know about setting up a portfolio website, both mistakes and successes. That way you can build the best portfolio website possible. So the first thing that you wanna do is purchase a domain. I personally would recommend Google Domains because it's super easy to hook up with any of the major website building platforms that are available to consumers. It's reliable and I don't know about you, but I am totally wrapped up in the Google universe. So I have a Gmail account, I use Google Drive, I use Google Docs and Sheets and everything like that. So I know that I'm not gonna forget to pay for my domain in a year and it won't expire like my last one did. I know GoDaddy is really popular and that's actually where I purchased my last domain. I don't recommend them, but Google domains, absolutely. You know, there's other alternatives that are usually even cheaper than GoDaddy. The second step is choosing which website building platform you want to build your website on. One thing you need to know is unless you're self hosting your website, you don't need to worry about uh, getting hosting, which can be expensive. You would need to self-host if you were building your website on WordPress, wordpress.org, not wordpress.com. That is how I built After Arts website, but my artist portfolio website is actually built with Squarespace, um, which I would definitely recommend. It's a little bit more expensive than a few other options, but I've had no problems with it. And then if you download uh, How to Art, I've listed all of my recommended uh, website building platforms. And then after that, you you will want to start building the website, right? So all of the platforms that I've included on that list have their own professionally designed layouts. Um, so you'll want to pick something that really highlights and reflects your work and then customize it so that it, you know, is unique to you and it really suits what you're trying to show. Every single one of the website building platforms that I've recommended have their own professionally designed themes that are responsive, meaning that they will show up looking great on, you know, a large monitor or, you know, something, you know, small like an iPhone. In case you didn't know, half of your website visitors will actually be looking at your profile on mobile. So you definitely want to make sure your portfolio website looks great across all different screen sizes um, and is easy for them to navigate. I also wanna mention that almost all of the website building platforms that I've included on that list all have some kind of free trial period. You can set up the website that you want and see if you like how the platform works. And if you hate it, you can move on to the next one and it's no big deal. But once you've made that decision, once you've picked your domain, decided where you want to build your website, decided on a layout, then of course you need to start setting up your portfolio. So with your portfolio, you absolutely want to make sure that your work looks great. Typically a white background is going to look the cleanest. Um, some people opt in for a black background, but that's kind of outdated now. It's much harder to read a white text on a black background than it is to read a black text on a white background. So the first thing that you'll wanna figure out is your homepage. The homepage is really important because that page is gonna see so much traffic, so much more traffic than the rest of your website. So you don't wanna neglect it. You wanna make sure that it looks interesting. Maybe there's a nice video on it. Maybe there is a gallery um, of photos that include different pieces from different bodies of work. Next, you're obviously going to want to really focus on making great galleries for your work. So galleries are where you can have a grid of images of your work or videos, maybe it's a slideshow, you know, some go vertically, some go horizontally, you know, some are in a grid and you can click and they will expand. There are so many options and they're all great, you know, get something that feels right for your artwork that you're gonna be happy with and that help 
your viewers experience your work in the way that you want them to experience it. Another thing that I think is really important is including your artist statement with your art. One mistake that I've made for a long time and I just barely corrected is that instead of writing my artist statement in text, I would write my artist statement in like a PDF document and then screenshot it and then upload it as the first image of my body of work because that's how it kind of worked with my layout and um, that's how it seemed to make sense. But the reason why I don't recommend doing that is because there's no way for Google to see that, oh, her body of work is about Colorado. So hopefully your layout has a spot for you to write an artist statement either next to your work or above or below. That way Google can properly index that work. So I ended up setting a primary page so that when you click on one of my portfolios in the menu, the first thing that will show up is a page that is dedicated to my artist statement. And then underneath that is a button that says, you know, view gallery. Um, and then when you click that, it'll open up the full gallery. And what I like about that is you can't see my photos without understanding the context first. I think it might be a turnoff for some that just, you know, want to get to that content right away. But I mean, it's simple and it'll make sure that, you know, my work is actually indexed in Google because there's text to direct it to my website. And ever since I did that, I've actually seen an improvement in my search ranking. And yeah, I, I think it's really effective. But what you'll want to do once you're ready to get your artwork up on your site is separate them out in different bodies of work. Um, I don't recommend putting all of your work online. This is supposed to be the best of the best. If you want to show in progress work or, you know, not focus on your greatest work, you want to put that in your blog um, and then write a little bit about it. Like, oh, I'm working on this project. I'm exploring these ideas. But really for your portfolios, they should be strong, powerful, complete work that makes sense among other pieces um, and you'll want to do individual portfolios for each body of work another important lesson I learned much later on was that you really should host your blog on your website for the longest time I was sharing all my blog content on tumblr and only tumblr because that's kind of what I was taught to do that's what other artists were doing but then I learned about search engine optimization your blog content is really valuable to search engines because it is new constant stream of content you know you're gonna probably be updating your website maybe once a year once every few months but you know you're gonna be generating blog content much more frequently which helps you rank and search a lot better. You can learn more about SEO up there. So after you have your galleries and your blog and your homepage all set up, you're going to want to write an about page. Your about page is really important because quite simply, people are gonna wanna know who you are. They wanna know why you're making the work you're making. They wanna know your background and your experience. If you want to learn more about writing an artist bio, again, you can download that guide. I've included a few examples of my own. That way you can get started. And in addition to your artist bio, you absolutely need to provide contact information. Your email, your social links. I wouldn't recommend putting your address or your phone number on your website. I like to include my CV, which is a list of my accomplishments, the exhibitions that I've been in, the publications that I've had. Um, I have an online version of that on my website, as well as a PDF document that is downloadable for anyone that you know feels like they want to keep me on file <laughs> I hope nobody's doing that but you know if somebody's really interested in your work and might want to hire you for some reason it's good to have a CV or resume on your website that way it's easy for them to access another thing that is valuable to include is a list of upcoming events if you're super active in your community and you're showing work all over the place make sure that you have you know an events list that way if people are in the area they can see what you're up to and something else that I've noticed a lot of people do and I actually do on my blog on my website is make a list of other artists that you want to support it doesn't really benefit you in a whole lot of ways but I think it's I think it's a fun way for artists to support each other and I actually do get a lot of inbound links from my artist friends websites um, so that's kind of cool and I think that is about it like I said please download that guide if you want more information to help you set up your portfolio website please let me know if you have any other questions that I can answer or 
or if you want me to take a look at your website and let you know what I think, I would love to do that. So please just let me know in the comments and I will talk to you very soon. So thank you for watching.